Our relationship with money is changing. With technology breakthroughs such as M-Pesa, which created mobile money, and blockchain, which gave rise to cryptocurrencies, there's a clear shift in the way we view and use money. Now, around Africa and globally, we're beginning to see major headlines such as countries declaring Bitcoin as the national currency. Large corporations like Tesla have accepted crypto as a form of payment, and lots of governments are creating their own central bank digital currency, such as our neighbors Nigeria with the e-Naira, and now Ghana with the e-City. But what exactly is the e-City? What exactly is a central bank digital currency? How is it different from a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? How does it work? How does it affect you and should you be excited about it or should you be concerned? If you're keen to find out and you definitely should be, then stay tuned. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel I speak about digital transformation, agile strategy and personal development. In recent months, the Central Bank of Ghana has announced the creation and potential launch of a digital currency for Ghana called the E-City. In August 2021, it was announced in a press release that the Central Bank had partnered with a German institution called G plus D to implement a pilot project to deliver a general purpose Central Bank digital currency which is intended to lead to the issuance of a digital form of the national currency. Now, Since the setup of the Central Bank's Fintech and Innovation Office, we've seen a lot of proactive digital policies and this is definitely one of them. However, for the everyday person, there's a lot of grey area about the ECD. So I'll start first by answering the question, what is the ECD? Now the ECD is very simply the digital form of the city. It's the same Ghana city with no physical components. It's only accessible digitally. The ECD is intended to be Ghana's digital currency as part of the digital Ghana agenda to digitize our economy for accessibility, efficiency and convenience. It is typically referred to as a CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency. However, it's not a cryptocurrency. I think this is one of the main issues that people have around the ECD. Because Ghana's position around cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin has typically been to reiterate to the public that it's not regulated and the trading platforms are not licensed under the SEC, so most people get confused because it seems the central bank is turning around to create a replica of the very technology that they discourage. But that is not the case. The ECD is not a cryptocurrency. So let me quickly highlight the main differences between a CBDC like the ECD and a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Now I will explain these differences under three main headings, namely centralization, permission, and anonymity, starting first with centralization. Now cryptocurrencies operate under the premise of decentralization. This simply means the rules of operations and control are spread across hundreds or thousands of individual users called nodes on the network. They record, monitor, and come to a consensus about all the rules that apply to that cryptocurrency. So there is a democracy when it comes to cryptocurrencies because each user has a vote that allows them to participate in determining what the rules of operation will be. So users are able to determine whether the supply of coins should be capped or not. They effectively determine what the monetary policy will be for their own benefit and the benefit of all the users. A CBDC is the exact opposite. It is fully centralized and controlled 100% by the central bank that issues it. This means that the regulator or government controls the monetary policy around the digital currency and decides if they are going to increase or decrease the amount of currency units in circulation. That means they can also determine who to assign currency units to and who to take currency units away from. They can assign units to the banks or they can take units away from fraudulent institutions. And the technology allows this to be done at an individual level as well. So think about that. Now whether this will be a good thing or a bad thing is yet to be seen, but the reason this is possible leads me to my second point which is anonymity. Now most people tend to think that cryptocurrencies are anonymous, but that's not true. Rather it's pseudonymous. Let me explain. As I mentioned earlier, cryptocurrencies are decentralized and operate a public ledger that permanently records transactions indefinitely. That means anybody can go on there and see every single transaction that has ever occurred from every wallet. It's pseudonymous because users operate under a wallet address which hides their identity. So your wallet address essentially becomes your fake name. 
However, if the wallet's address is ever linked to your identity, then every transaction you've completed will be traced to you as well. Now, this is how government authorities like the FBI are able to track down criminals who use cryptocurrencies as an avenue for fraud. Cash still remains the most anonymous means of transacting, which is why most fraudsters prefer it. So crypto is pseudonymous, not anonymous. A central bank digital currency like the ECD is not anonymous. It requires the same level of identification that you currently provide to open a bank account or mobile wallet or get into the financial system. So your name, your address, your social security, your net worth, your future goals. I'm kidding, but you know they ask for a lot of information and you can expect the same from a CBDC. In order for a central bank to know that you are really you, they need to know a lot about you in order to grant you access to a central bank wallet and prevent individual users from having multiple wallets and trying to game the system. The last difference is permission. Cryptocurrencies are permissionless public ledgers. This means if you want to go on the Bitcoin network and find out every single transaction that has ever occurred on the blockchain, you can. There is no person or single entity that grants you permission. It's entirely open and public. Additionally, you can participate without needing anybody to grant you access. You can transact, make and receive payments unilaterally. However, a central bank digital currency is the opposite. It will be private and permissioned so in order to own a wallet, transact C history, you would need to be granted access by the entity that created the digital currency, which in this case is a central bank. So most likely the central bank would delegate access to the banks that serve as its nodes and they in turn would access all the information and grant transaction access to individuals to make and receive payments. They would start first with a select few in a pilot like they're currently doing and determine that feasibility in order to later expand outward. So now let's talk about some of the benefits of having the ECD. Firstly, if following the pilot, it is rolled out to the masses, then it greatly accelerates our journey towards a cashless or rather cash light society. It greatly enhances the efficiency of transaction and alleviates a lot of the issues around cash or even cards. If the central bank is able to figure out how to make this available not only to the tech savvy but to everyone including lower income earners and users of feature phones then it also expands the scope of financial inclusion since the ecd is tied to the actual ghana city the concern of price volatility that is present with cryptocurrencies like bitcoin will be a non-factor it will present a faster means of transacting and a great alternative to complement the existing digital channels that presently exist like mobile money but with great power comes great responsibility and there are a few areas of concern that exist as well. Due to the fact that a central bank digital currency is not anonymous or pseudonymous, it means a central bank will have access to exceptionally large amounts of customer data. This puts a large target on their backs for cyber criminal attacks because this would effectively become the largest central repository for customer financial information in Ghana. That makes it a prime target for hackers and cyber criminals. A lot of investment would have to go into data protection, cybersecurity, and to build trust for the system. A lot of people will be concerned about their privacy when it comes to using the eCity. If the system was hacked and private customer information was leaked, then a lot of people would be exposed to the potential of identity theft. So friends, the eCD has a lot of potential to accelerate our cash light agenda and provide faster, more efficient and convenient transacting. The ECD is a central bank digital currency, but it differs from a cryptocurrency in terms of centralization, anonymity and permission. As many benefits as can be realized from the technology, there are significant risks in the areas of data protection, cybersecurity and trust. If these are solved, then the potential for this technology is limitless. I hope you found this video valuable and if you did, remember to give it a thumbs up and drop a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.